to clear some misconception on a problem I had mentioned about halfway into the previous video. Basically, we were trying to solve this thing for C. And the question is, what comes out? So before we continue, you might ask, why? Why do we just have numbers in here? Why don't we just say A is 4, B is 7, whatever comes out? Why on earth do I have things without numbers? So, in science, what I want to do is I want to know what happens for whatever terms I have. So again, each of these letters represents some physical characteristic of our system. So it could be mass, or pressure, or whatever. And basically what I want to do is determine what happens to my system whenever I have the mass or my pressure. So as an example, if I'm in the dominator and I'm storm chasing, and I want to know what happens outside the tornado, I basically want to determine what happens if I have large pressure fluctuations in my tornado, and I want to determine how bad the wind speeds are going to be, and I want to determine how fast particles are flying at me. Well, I have to go outside, well, not outside of, outside of the vehicle, but outside of my home, of course. I have to go outside and measure whatever's there. Or in the case of physics, you know, you can have a graph and value layer construction, you have to go to the lab to measure it. Anyway, what I'm saying is, we want to deal with these things before we know the exact numbers. We want to be able to know what's going to happen once I make the measurement. So, in this case, I could have, if I go out and I measure mass equals 3g, then I want to be able to go in, or g for gram, I apologize. I want to be able to go, and I want to be able to know what is coming out of the equation. So, that sort of clears up why we're doing this in the first place. So we have this thing, which isn't nearly as exciting as a roller coaster example, but I'm just going to stick with it. We have that multiplying and dividing are opposites, and that is one of the key points of algebra. There's another two set of opposites that we'll come into later. But for now, we have multiplying and dividing are opposites. So what we can do is if I multiply both sides by b, and since I have the community law, I can really do whatever I want with the b. I can put it on either side. It doesn't really matter. If I multiply both sides by b, and that's what it looks like a p, then multiplying and dividing their opposites, the b's go away because we have this law. So the b's go away, and you end up just getting whatever's left. So these go away. And we're just left with a times e equals d times b, which is extremely important to wrap that around. Then, since multiplying and dividing are opposites, we can do the opposite the other way and divide both sides by c. Then the c's go away, and we're just left with a. Well, I think I was trying to solve for c, so sorry about that. Let's divide by a. So that's what we get. In the case of the roller coaster example, um, here, let me just erase this. I don't want to go around. We have the equation where M was the mass of your cart, H was the height, and V was the speed. So in this case, we recall that what this guy meant meant was multiplying twice, and if I wanted to, I can make this a 3, and then it will be multiplying 3 times, but the physical law has it with a 2, so we're just going to stick with 2. And it's opposite with something called the square root. So this thing is opposite with square. Those are opposites. So using this, we can solve this equation. And this happens for, say, a roller coaster. You can calculate where it is. But now what we're going to do is we can divide by m again, and so the m's go away on both sides, since I have to do everything to both sides. Then I can multiply by the 2. So we should be experts at this now, so I can just say divide by 2, move it over. And then I take the square root. 
little rock of V is square root of 2GH. So if I want to calculate how fast I'm going on the roller coaster without friction, which is something I mentioned in the video, just kind of be careful about this because if your roller coaster has got a whole bunch of friction, then this law is going to work. But that's just a side note for those of you who are really interested in this. Um, what you're going to do is you can take the square root of 2 times g, which is something like 9 point h, and then times your height. So if I'm 50 meters up, I, well, let's actually take an example. Let's say this thing is about 10, okay? And let's say I am 5 meters up in the air, or up 5 up. So then we have the square root of 2 times 10 times 5. Now, what I could do is I could go back in my rectangle and I can start counting points, or I can just remember the math minutes I did in sixth, or not sixth, but um, second or third grade. And I recall that 2 times 10 is 20, and 20 times 5 is 100. Mm -hmm. <laughs> evil shot, this is why I like whiteboards. Your speed's going to end up being 10. Okay? Alright, so I'm going to go head off to the laboratory. I'll see you guys in the next video.